a very very misunderstood uh, word of course most patis are misunderstood people but uh, empathy is a little more uh, misunderstood empathy is not sympathy it is not compassion it is not pity it is not ayo papa empathy as the classic definition says is putting yourself in the other person's shoes try to understand what is going on in his mind which includes starting from what has been his upbringing his indoctrination his value system coming right down to the present moment and asking yourself why does this person say this what does he mean when he makes such a statement what does his body language mean when he shows this type of behavior or what is the consequence or what is the reason behind his outburst or his crying or his showing some different expression and things of that uh, sort the more we develop this skill it's a basically a skill empathy is a skill whereby we can become better judges of what is going on in the mind of the other uh, person now practically speaking if you want to build up this uh, skill called empathy what i would suggest to you is before you try to even make an attempt to understand other people make an attempt to understand yourself better you will get an idea if you do this little exercise right now or any time when you feel like stop whatever you are doing periodically and ask yourself two questions in quick succession the first question is what am i thinking right now very easy to answer i was thinking that i'm hungry and i probably have to go and have food or i was thinking about tomorrow's uh, commitment or i was thinking that uh, it's very hot and uh, weather is becoming bad whatever it is so you'll be able to answer that immediately ask yourself the second question what am i feeling right now what is the emotion going on in my mind right now you'll be amazed most of us cannot answer that question or we answer it in a very very nonchalant way by saying i'm feeling good i'm feeling okay i'm feeling nice which is not true at all there's some emotion going on i'm feeling restless slightly restless not very much i'm not feeling angry but i'm feeling a little irritated with so and so's behavior i'm not really worried as such but a little bit of anxiety is there with regard to something that i have might have to face tomorrow now when you do this sort of exercise 10 times 20 times mark out how many times you could immediately come out with the answer and a correct answer mind you specific emotion and feeling no harm if you couldn't do it because then the next step would be start practicing it just comes out of practice do it 10 times do it 100 times do it 500 times take your time any time of the day you don't have to stop your work you only have to stop yourself mentally you may be doing some routine thing like driving a vehicle or doing cooking in the kitchen or you know just uh, sitting and waiting for somebody or whatever it is physically you continue doing what you are mentally stop yourself and ask this question now the more you practice this the more you will be able to understand your own uh, uh, emotions that is where you have taken the first step so when you know your own emotion then ask yourself the second question the why part of it why am i getting irritated when so and so is making a noise why did i feel disappointed when such and such friend did not call me go into the reasons behind it and you'll be amazed if you really practice and if you really put your mind to it the reason will slowly sur- you know, surface you'll probably recall that even earlier i was let down by a very good friend of mine and uh, slowly slowly that person stopped responding i didn't even realize till one fine day i found that he actually is not my friend anymore so this time when something very small happened this friend had promised that today morning he's going to call me up and the whole morning is getting over and his call has not come i am developing an anxiety am i headed the same way is this relationship also going to get spoiled whereas he may not have called me for a simple reason that he forgot 
or he is overslept in the morning or his friend came over and he got very busy with something else it could be nothing to do with me but you see how our indoctrination our past experiences play a role so once you start connecting up these two then venture into the waters outside then you say okay now i am going to learn what is going on in the mind of another uh, uh, person easiest way is to start with people whom you know fairly well but not too well because remember that people whom you think you are closest to they are the people who play games with you if you ever had the occasion to read that uh, book called games people play you will understand that with most of our second line of people or people with whom we are not very deeply and very closely emotionally attached we are very open and frank i am feeling hungry could i have something to eat please but if i am feeling hungry i have come back from outside and my wife is busy sitting and watching tv i don't tell her straight away i am feeling hungry why don't you switch off the tv and make some food for me you know what i do ha huh? something interesting going on on tv is it so yeah one of those serials yeah but those serials are more important to you than anything else no go ahead go ahead watch no why what's uh, particular about it yeah, to you tv is far more important in life than anything else including your own family yeah. nothing of that sort i was just sitting and watching uh, uh, tv yes yes i i i know i suppose in the morning also you were busy yeah my friend had come over and uh, you know i was chatting up with her oh i see your friends are more important than family now she's getting really put out what's happening what are you trying to say <laughs> do you realize what time it is and uh, how hungry i am you know that i haven't had proper breakfast i rushed off early in the morning oh my god why didn't you tell me uh, that why should i tell you if you love me you should have known that no nowhere in the deepest of psychology books it is written that a wife who loves her husband should know the content of his stomach and how hungry he, uh, he is yet this is what we presume and that's why i'm cautioning you don't do it with people who are very close uh, to you you can use this skill of empathy once you've learned this skill of empathy you can use it to improve even your personal uh, relationship but let's start with people whom you know at the peripheral level and if they happen to be your friends or something of that sort you can do a simple exercise like what you did for yourself you tell the person can you tell me what are you thinking right now the person will say this is what i am thinking then ask that person what are you feeling right now and before he answers you make a mental note i think this person is happy or i think this person is showing some anxiety or i think this friend is irritated right now put a label to the emotions in your own mind and then ask him what are you feeling right now and see how close you were to the correct uh, answer just start off practicing like this as i told you with friends with acquaintances with colleagues or something of that sort and if the person is close enough to you you can even bounce it back to him when he says that i am feeling anxious you can tell him that i noticed an irritation on your uh, face is it only anxiety or is it irritation and the person says yes now that you say it i realize that i am irritated so you are helping that uh, uh, friend of yours also or the person may say no i am not irritated uh, uh, at all it's just that uh, anxiety type of thing was i showing irritation on my uh, uh, face so it helps him to understand that without being irritated he was giving out a signal as though he is irritated so he better be careful on that that friend and it gives you an indication that what i thought of as irritation was actually uh, anxiety that's how we start off now let me be very very clear that empathy or building up this skill called empathy takes immense amount of practice it's so easy to say yes i understand what people are going through i am a person who's always been interested in human welfare yeah i know so and so must be upset so and so is this or that it doesn't work uh, that way let me give you a real life uh, example here was this very eminent surgeon a cancer surgeon 
There was one old lady who was suffering from throat cancer and it had become so bad that doctors had given up hope. At one point they said, no, this cancer cannot be treated and that's the end of her life. Within a few days or a few weeks, she is going to pass away. Somebody approached this cancer surgeon and took the patient to him. He said, yes, there is a chance. I can maybe do a very intricate surgery and remove the entire cancer. Would you like to take a chance? Yes, that was the last chance. No other hope. Go ahead. He did the surgery successfully. Her life was saved. She is sent off to the post-op and then to the ward. Few days later, this doctor is taking his rounds in the hospital. He walks into her room. And this lady is lying down on the bed. She's got all these needles stuck in her uh, hand. She cannot get up. Her throat is bandaged. She cannot speak. But the moment she saw the doctor, her eyes lit up. She gave a big smile and grabbed a pad, writing pad from her table and started scribbling away furiously. Doctor, you have come to see me. I am so happy to see you. I would have liked to personally come and meet you as soon as I am up and about. I think that I owe my life to you. Without you, I would have been dead today. You are the one who saved my life and has given me a fresh lease of life. I am so thankful to you. She wrote all that and handed it over to the doctor. Doctor read it, smiled back at her, turned the page and wrote, It is God who saves lives. I am only doing my duty. But I am very happy that your entire cancer has been removed and you get a fresh lease of life and now you can have a healthy and a long life. God bless you and have a good, healthy and long life. See you and give it back to her. Lady is looking very puzzled at the pad at the doctor. Then she turns the third page and writes, Doctor, I can hear. The doctor did not have to write and give back. He knows he's an eminent cancer surgeon. He knows that that throat surgery has done nothing to her hearing. She can't speak. So she's writing and giving. He can talk back to her. No? He doesn't have to take the trouble of writing and handing it back uh, to her. This is what I mean by saying that if you truly want to empathize, you can't put yourself in the shoes of the other person till you remove your own. Now this man is taking his rounds, wearing the shoes of an eminent cancer surgeon oncologist. So he doesn't even understand what happens to a patient. He knows what happens to the cancer. He knows it so beautifully. He can do wonders. He can do miracles and save lives. But he doesn't understand a simple thing like a person who's got, you know, who's recovering from throat cancer can only communicate one way. She has to write and people have to talk back to her. So that is why I have this very, very strong suggestion that please keep removing your shoes. Stop this labeling thing. Oh, this one? Yes, I know. That one? Yes, that is how that person will behave. I had a young man coming to me once from another city and saying that I've just moved into this city and I want to be, you know, I'm a very trained and highly qualified counselor. I've got this string of degrees. And now that I moved into this city, I was told that uh, you are one of the people in this field and I would you know, like your help to get some employment or assignment or something of that uh, sort. I was interested, nice young man with very good qualifications. I was, I started talking to uh, him. At one point he suddenly said, Dr. Ali, I can counsel alcoholics very well. I said, thank you. I'll let you know when there is something. And I sent him off. You know why? The very fact that this man makes a bombastic statement saying, I can counsel alcoholics very well. Now, alcoholics are not people with two horns and four hands and six legs. An alcoholic is a human being, exactly like you and me, who has a problem because he has been drinking alcohol and has become dependent on it. That's it. So what do you mean by saying, I can counsel alcoholics? I'm putting a label on that person. I'm looking down at him. This disgusting person who is an alcoholic. No empathy. I don't want you to succumb to that sort of thing as you go on deeper and deeper into the field of uh, uh, counseling. And to be able to refrain from doing that, you have to constantly and continuously keep improving on this skill of empathy. 
Every now and then ask yourself what is this person staying or behaving or his action. Even an action which a person comes and tells you. Let's say this man comes and tells uh, uh, you that, uh, you know, I'm very angry with my wife. She doesn't cooperate with me. She's not nice to me and this, this, this. And, uh, you know, things have become so bad. Uh, the only way I can get work done from her is to hit her. Very easy to be, you know, holier than thou and this and that and say, hey, you go about hitting your wife and you expect her to cooperate and be nice to you. It doesn't work that way, right? No. Stop. Empathize with that uh, uh, person. Why do you think this person is hitting his wife? Go back all the way. Maybe he came from that type of background where his father used to hit his mother regularly. If that was not bad enough, he had an experience once which is deeply embedded in his mind. From small age, he saw his father beating up his mother and used to get very scared and go and scrounge in one corner. One fine day when he was maybe 10 or 12 years old, he felt that I'm big enough and I'm macho enough and I'm going to protect my mother. The angel, the great, you know, spiller of support, the one person whom I love more than anybody else in this whole world. She's getting up, beaten up by her husband. I am going to protect her. So the next night when the father came and was about to hit his wife, this young fellow came in between and said, Hey, you don't touch my mother, okay? Do you know what the mother did? Make a guess. The mother probably told the little fellow, Don't you dare talk to your father like that. Who are you to come in between? Move off. Maybe she gave him a slap and said, Move out. What has this got to do with you? Now his whole value system took a topsy-turvy. Who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? My mother, whom I love, adore, respect, she is the one who slapped me and said, move out from here. So probably a husband hitting a wife is the done thing. Somewhere it is recorded. 10 years, 20 years later, he is now hitting his uh, wife. And for you and me, it's very easy to condemn this fellow and say, look at this fellow. He is an educated uh, chap. He is this, 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 and he should have been civilized, etc. Now that is where your uh, you know, examination or your test of empathy comes in. Could you take the trouble? Could you actually say, there has to be some reason why this person is violent with his own wife. I'm going to find that out. Once you find that out, it becomes so much easier to counsel the person, understand the person, support the person. Even support his wife if she comes to you for counseling to make her understand what's probably going on in her husband's mind. She may be very frustrated, very angry that, you know, I love him so much, I care for him, I look after all his needs and yet why does he have to come and uh, hit me and these sort of things. So even with her you can uh, um, help. But as I said, you have to understand empathy and you also have to differentiate between empathy and sympathy. We very often confuse. See, I'll give it to you in a very simple um, example. You see a beggar, apparently very poor, wearing torn uh, clothes and no footwear and carrying one tin uh, bowl in his uh, uh, hand and with disheveled hair and grown beard etc. And he comes to you with a very pathetic face and says, Amma, please give me uh, something. Sympathy would make you open your purse, take out some money and give it to him. Empathy would mean you look at that person from top to toe and ask yourself, is he handicapped? Is he disabled? Is he incapable of earning his own uh, bread or something of that uh, sort? Do I take pity on him and give him some uh, money or do I, you know, actually am I making matters worse by encouraging him to be a beggar when he can actually earn a livelihood for uh, himself? All these decisions can come if you have built up the skill of being able to empathize. To look at him maybe and form a picture. To see his body language, see his words, form another picture. Maybe spend half a minute by asking him two, three questions and see his response and you form a picture. And if your conclusion is, I do not want to give this person even a single rupee, you can walk off from there. You are doing him a favor. 
because otherwise he may have taken that money and drunk himself uh, further and gone and beaten up his uh, wife. You would have been instrumental in uh, that. So this is what I mean. There was a time when I was uh, uh, doing uh, training for police officers. And when I was talking to the commissioner about the modules and this and that, I said, I'd like to take a session on empathy. And this gentleman started laughing. He said, Dr. Ali, if police officers start empathizing with the criminals, we've had it. I said, no, you're mistaken. It is only when a police officer can empathize with the criminal, he knows whether to beat him up, whether to lock him up or whether to let him uh, go. Empathy does not mean sympathy. It does not mean that just because he's taking interest and finding out what was his background, why he did this, did he actually do this crime or whatever it is. After that, he follows the rules. In fact, he can follow rules better because of empathy rather than a policeman who either becomes very cruel and goes on beating everybody or becomes so sympathetic that he starts letting go of uh, everybody. I'll give you a very touching uh, real life uh, example. There was this couple who were friends of mine the um, husband was a brilliant uh, engineer and he started doing, you know, he set up a small scale industry and he had a few gadgets which he had invented at that time, which had tremendous potential to do very well. But although he was a very good technologist, he was a very poor businessman. So somehow or the other and running a small scale industry with all its complications was too much for him. Years and years and years he struggled. He was living in a two-room rented uh, house. He could only send his children to a very mediocre school. He used to go around on a small moped uh, uh, motorcycle. He could not give his wife or family any luxuries of life. And it went on for years like that. One fine day, he made a breakthrough. He got some organization who took over the marketing and said, okay, we are going to give you this and you just concentrate on the manufacturing and we'll see to it that this product uh, moves. And it started moving. Within a few months, things were really looking up. After 10, 12 years of marriage, this wife could actually feel the fruits of her husband's labor. And she said, now I can look forward to a better quality of life. And tragedy struck. One fine day, in the workshop itself, this man just collapsed with a heart failure. By the time they took him to hospital, he was no more. It was very, very shocking. Two small school-going uh, uh, children, no savings at all. This lady is a housewife. She has no means of uh, earning and no career. And here, this is what has happened. Anyway, you know what happens in these circumstances? Relatives, neighbors, friends, everybody comes to sympathize with her. All those ceremonies and this and that went over. I waited till everything was over and everybody had moved off. And then one afternoon, I went to her uh, uh, house to give whatever solace I could. Her old mother was there, who was very old and uh, you know partially deaf. Children had gone to school. She was sitting quietly. I went there and I sat down over there. She, they had put up a big photograph of the late husband with a garland uh, on it. As I was making small talk, I noticed that uh, you know she was uh, looking towards that uh, uh, photograph. So I just made a statement to, you know, try to empathize with her. I made a statement and uh, I said, you must be feeling very sad and very sorry that he passed away. She turned around like this and gave me a very stern look and said, Ali, you really want to know what I feel? I said, yes. She said, I feel extremely angry at this man. How dare he leave me and go away at a time like this? I'm not feeling sad. I'm not missing him. I'm feeling angry with this bloody son of a so and so, so and so. And she started using expletives. She got so out of control. She went and pulled that photograph and banged it down on the ground. And she said, what does he think of himself leaving me like this and going away with two small uh, children? I stood by him throughout the worst period of his life. And here he is happily sitting up there in heaven. Everybody was coming and telling me your husband has gone to heaven and this and that. And I am here in hell right now. It was a shocking revelation. Anyway, I stood with her. I spent one hour with her. She just kept on crying, crying, crying. By the time the children turned up, then she recovered and she made a cup of tea and I had the tea and then I spoke to her children and left. Next morning at six o'clock, she called me up. 
She said, you know something, Ali, this was the first night after he died that I slept. I don't know what you did to me. I don't know what it was. But so much that was choking me inside came out. And let me tell you, what I told you yesterday was only an outburst. I genuinely love him. I genuinely miss him. And I'm going to bring up these children of his who are as intelligent as him and maybe fulfill those dreams which he has not been able to fulfill. Today I made up my mind. I will go to the factory and I'll start rebuilding that uh, thing. Now why did this uh, happen? It's not my success story or anything of that sort. It's a success story of empathy. Are you able to be open to be able to understand? And whenever in doubt, explore. That's the best way that a counselor can do. Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling hungry, angry? Are you feeling extremely jealous of this uh, uh, person? Are you feeling thrilled with whatever you got or are you anxious about what the future will hold uh, for you? The more you keep exploring, whether it is with a counselee or whether it's with a friend or whether it's with a colleague, the more you keep exploring, people feel happy. One thing I'd like to tell you about empathy is, even if you use the wrong emotion, as I said, this person is feeling anxious and you said, are you feeling irritated? The person will correct you and say, no, I'm not feeling irritated, I'm feeling anxious, but he will not feel bad that you used a wrong word. He'll feel nice that you made an attempt to understand uh, uh, him. And secondly, he'll feel nice that you helped him to explore. There may be even occasions where a person after some time says, hey, I didn't realize that I'm feeling irritated now that you mentioned it. Yes, I was all the time thinking that it's only worry and anxiety. But now that you mention it, I realize that it is uh, irritation. So you are helping the person to help himself in terms of understanding his own emotions. Provided you take this trouble of going deeper and deeper, right from, as I told you, his basics of, uh, you know, his background, his upbringing and whatever experiences of life coming right down to what is affecting him now and what he is feeling about it and why he is feeling about it, reflect it back to the person and then step back and say, now that you know what you are feeling and what your aspirations and what your frustrations are, Go ahead and take the steps. I am there with you to back you up. Whenever you need me, I am just one phone call away. That's it. Practice, practice, practice. Thank you.